Welcome everyone to the Christmas Eve service of First Methodist Houston. My name is Andy Nixon. I am senior pastor of our church. And I wanna thank you so much uh, for worshiping with us this Christmas Eve. I know that it has taken a different form probably than you and I uh, would ever choose. And if I had told you uh, a few months ago that we would be worshiping like this on Christmas Eve, I don't know that I would have believed it, much less you. But here we are. And one of the things that I've learned, and I should have known it from the scripture passage regarding Jesus' birth, but one of the things I've learned again this year has been is that God works through all circumstances. God works through all circumstances. Life does not have to follow our plan in order for the Holy Spirit to move. In fact, scripture in many ways is a testimony to the opposite and that the Holy Spirit will move and guide and direct our lives in ways that surprise us, sometimes shock us, but definitely catch us off guard. And yet when we go through them and when we look back, what we see is God would not have it any other way. And the plan and the prophecies have all taken place. As we've gone through these last several months, I have seen the Holy Spirit work. And while I pray we never go through another uh, period of history like we've been through in these recent times, I can say that God has used them to bring his plan about and that I have seen acts of kindness, mercy, faith, compassion, forgiveness. I, I have seen the whole gamut of everything the Holy Spirit does in this time. And so while I would never say that uh, suffering and, and, and pandemic is God's plan, I don't believe that at all. But what I do believe is that God uses all times to lead us to him. And as a result of that, we have seen, you and I, God's plan at work. So today I want to do things a little backwards. Uh, usually we read the scripture, you know, and then we talk about it for a few minutes. And, uh, and that's fine. But uh, today I kind of want to talk for a few minutes and then lead into the scripture. Because I want to tell you things that I have seen in our church uh, over, these last, over this last almost year. And then as we read the scripture uh, today, ask yourself, have I seen God move? Have I seen the Holy Spirit working in me and the lives of others? Have I seen God using this time so that his will has been accomplished? Because when I think about the birth of Jesus, what I think about is, is that God used that time, that day, that moment, Mary and Joseph, Bethlehem, all the surroundings, so that God's plan would take a dramatic turn and accelerate the redemption of God's people. God used the moment, and I think God has done that in these days. So let me tell you some stories just from the last few months, things that have happened, small and large, in First Methodist Houston. Uh, one of my favorite stories involves Ruthie Estes. If you don't know Ruthie, uh, she mostly uh, worships at our downtown campus, and uh, she is famous for her rum cakes. Most of you probably know this. If you don't know this and you would like a rum cake, please call me. I think we can work a deal out. Uh, but uh, Ruthie is famous for these. She delivers them to people just uh, as a random act of kindness, almost, as the Holy Spirit guides her. And one day I was... I was uh, 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 just uh, working at home and my phone rings and it's Ruthie and she says I'm coming by uh, downtown I'm gonna swing by your apartment and I've got a rum cake uh, just for you and I went you got to be kidding me really that's so awesome and so she called me a few minutes later I go down I, I walk out of the building and there's Ruthie Estes in her car and, and she gets out and she's got a rum cake and she looks to me and says this is Ruthie's rum cake wagon here to deliver a rum cake just for you I thought it was hysterical. Funniest thing I'd heard all day. And I said, Ruthie, <laughs> how many of these are you delivering today? And she said, I think three dozen. I'm going to spend the whole day driving all around Houston delivering cakes uh, to people who I think need one today. Call it what you will. But to me, that's the Holy Spirit in action. That's Jesus going the extra mile so that his will gets accomplished. And to me, that's what Christmas is all about. Uh, another story that uh, comes to mind is I was uh, occasionally throughout the pandemic, I've just randomly called people uh, who have been on my heart, on my mind, 
people whose path I haven't crossed maybe in weeks or in some cases months. And it sounds so strange to say, but uh, I've literally gone months without seeing other pastors on our staff uh, because we've met at Zoom and then all of a sudden I'll see one of them, you know, at Sunday morning or some ministry event or missions activity. And, and we will look at each other kind of uh, uh, strangely and say, it's like, oh my gosh, I have not seen you in so long. You probably had the same thing. Uh, but uh, I was um, calling people who um, who I hadn't seen in a while. And one of them uh, told me a story. I was calling. I said, well, how are things going? And uh, they've got some fifth, sixth graders, and uh, the, the youth ministry and children's ministry has largely been uh, confined to Zoom, and it's been amazing what has been able to happen online. But uh, they were telling me that the fifth and sixth graders had a contest and uh, some Bible verse contest memorize, memorizing things. And, um, and, and then one of them won it, and who is a member of this family. Uh, and the next day, the teachers, Oscar and Linda Siviero, uh, went uh, over and delivered, hand-delivered donuts as the prize uh, for winning the contest on the previous day. The parents said to me, they didn't have to do that. But I would kind of push back on that and say, you know what? Maybe they did. Because that's the kind of thing the Holy Spirit does is to say, reach out, go the extra mile, go the distance, do the right thing. And it may seem so small at the time, but it means so much to the person who receives it. That to me is what Christmas is in a large degree about. I'll tell you one more story and I could, I could go on and on and on, but thankfully I won't. But I'll tell you a third story. Ann Spears uh, gave me a call a few weeks ago. And she said, Andy, I've just got on my heart uh, to do something for the people who haven't been able to come to church for a while. She said, could, I've got somebody who can make a Christmas ornament and could we uh, get them and then put them in a mailer and then send a letter out uh, from the church to some of our more vulnerable folks and just say, uh, we're thinking about you this time of year. And <laughs> Anne's telling me this story. She's one of the saints of the church. Uh, when, I, when I think about people who are saints at First Methodist, it's, it's Ann Spears and Stan Adams and Kristen Jones. Anyway, these folks. Uh, but uh, uh, I had just come out of a budget meeting and I wasn't at my holy best. And I'm thinking, okay, ornaments, that costs money. Packages, uh, that costs money. I'm thinking mailers, that costs money. And, and money's just been tight. That's just the reality of it. So it's like, I just don't know that we could do this. And so I kind of vetoed the idea. A few minutes later, Marty Verschel, our newest pastor, uh, calls me and says, Bud, that's kind of how he starts some conversations, Bud, you got a bad idea there. <laughs> you need to change your mind. This is the right thing to do. And he said, I know that finances, I get all that, but sometimes you just got to do the right thing. And as soon as the words came out of his mouth, I knew that he was right. And we did. We put a letter on it and I threw in my cell phone number just to say, you know, thank you to our most vulnerable folks. And many of them called me. Some of them even texted me pictures of their Christmas tree with the ornament from their church. And I knew that what, what Ann and Marty had said was what Jesus needed done. Going the extra mile, delivering, making something happen. Those to me are many of the principles that are at the heart of Christmas. It's not about the decorations. It's not about the ornaments. It's not about the festivities. It's about making something happen because that's what God did. On Christmas Day, a plan came together all around a baby, but a plan came together by which you and I and this world can be saved. And that is why we're here. And that's what Christmas Eve and Christmas Day are all about. So I want to read the scripture. I want to read the scripture that's this, uh, you know, the, the story that scripture tells. And as we hear it, you may be hearing it for the first time. And as you do, I hope you'll be making a decision about how it is you want to live in, in relation to this baby named Jesus. You may have been hearing, you may be hearing this um, for the time, for who knows how many times, and that you've heard this story over and over and over. But no matter how many times we hear it, it's a chance to make a decision about who we are and who we feel called to be. But as we read the scripture on this uh, Christmas Eve in preparation for Christmas Day, 
I pray that we would see that God is taking a step and a plan, and we are called to get on board with it. And as we celebrate uh, this holiday, as we celebrate tomorrow, this Christmas day, Jesus' birthday, one of the things that we are being asked is, are we ready to step forward with God into the Lord's plan? Luke 2, 1 through 20. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was an with the angel, a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had seen as it had been told to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Pray with me. Lord, we thank you for this amazing day, this chance to gather in preparation uh, for the birth of the one who is to come, Christ Jesus the Lord. We pray that our hearts and souls are prepared well to receive him. Give us the faith we need to take uh, not just uh, who he is, but all the things that he would teach uh, into our hearts as well. The love of neighbor, the reaching to the outsider, the prayers and compassions for all those, our enemies, our friends, all alike, help us to follow his example as he leads and teaches us. But above all, Jesus, on this, the day of your birth, we wish you a happy birthday and say thank you for being here, for your presence changed this world and it changes us with it. With it. Give us the faith we need to make a decision for you so that we might live evermore as disciples of yours. All this we pray in your holy name and as God's people, the Holy Church, we say together, amen. amen.